So I'm talking live with a wonderful person, a wonderful woman, uh, Misha. She was just sharing with me a little bit about her story um, and how she 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 was married to uh, uh, a rapper uh, known as Big Hawk and 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 just kind of share a little bit about that story real quickly. I don't have a whole lot of it, but I, talking with you, it brings back a lot of memories. Yes. Big Hawk was my husband and my wonderful husband. You want me to talk about the music, Big Hawk, or the man, Big Hawk? The, the, the man, know? the man. Well, we know his music was so real and so different. Him yes. and, and uh, his brother, uh, DJ Screw, DJ, I'm sorry, Fat Pat. Pat, Pat. Mm -hmm. Yes, his, his brother was Fat Pat, and they did, they had this really southern, uh, slow talking style of talking, and but it was so genuine. It yeah, it was. was. So authentic. It was them, you know, and it was really started to represent the culture here, um, their sound and everything that they created. They were some of the original members of the Screwed Up Click, and the Screwed Up Click was DJ Screw and some, mm. a couple of rappers, you know, from all over Houston that were, you know, trying to just make a name for themselves. And so real. They, so dynamic beats, And too. they were just talented guys that really just all hung out to, with each other at first. And then once they started getting more, some of them got more passionate at music than others. And so they started to rap and they started to really get into music and... Once they started uh, rapping on the screw tapes, the culture just started taking off. You know, uh, the cars, uh, the people, the, the events, everything around that time, it was just huge. And um, my husband was killed in 2006. Mm. Um, at the time um, he was killed, we had just got married three weeks. Our wedding ceremony was three weeks before he got killed. And mm. we had two babies. One was 11 months and one was five. And it was a very, very difficult time for me. He was a very, very faithful, loving man. Um, he was the one of the leaders of the clique. And so he would try to help the younger guys to be more responsible, to take the music thing seriously. Wow. And, um, he worked. Contrary to what they say about most rappers, yes. he, he was... Yes, he was. He wasn't that way. He was... When I met him at 29 years old, he had... Although he had lived in the Orleans apartments and the Crestmont apartments and some of the worst neighborhoods in Houston, he had never been to jail. Wow. Um, he didn't, you know, he had never been involved in anything illegal. Um, he had worked for American General for 10 years. Nice. And he used to hang out with his friends and catch the bus and go to work every day. He was just really a different type of guy. You know, he was a hard working man. And their music had so much heart. I mean, it. It was hardcore, but it was like positive. It, was. it wasn't real negative, but it was like real, you know. He talked about what he saw every day in those apartments and growing up, you know, uh, without any lights and any gas, you know, and his mom being a single mom trying to take care of four kids. He really did see a lot growing up in those neighborhoods. And so that's really what he rapped about, you know. And but he was trying to change his life. He was trying to be a better man. He was a great man. Um, when, I, when I met, I met him in my senior year in college at TSU, and he supported me through that. And I graduated from college, and I started teaching. And um, he, his career started taking off as well. So we were really planning. We had a lot of plans to do a lot of things in the community to help the community. And uh, he really wanted to get back. He did. He did. You know, he had a different mindset, I would say, from a lot of the guys just trying to get rich. That really wasn't him. He was more so trying to help wow. you know, others. So it was very unfortunate when he was taken from me in 2006. Did they ever um, catch the guy that shot him? They have not. 
you know, and it's, when I tell you this has been plaguing my life and it's been really, really difficult, you know, um, I've been suffering with a lot of mental health and depression because I don't know what happened to him and because he was such a good man, for him to, to say, okay, hon, I'm going over to my friend's house, play domino, to play dominoes and never come home, that it has left me just empty, you know, I just don't, with so many questions, I don't know what to do, I don't know, you know, who to question, who would want him, you know. And, and why it would happen to him. Know, why it would happen to him, it's just really, really been something hard to deal with. However, I've been, for my kids, you know, you got to be strong, you got to keep moving through, wow. pushing through and everything, and my kids, because of them, I have, you know, tried to keep his legacy alive through different acts and random acts in the community and different things that I know that he would be proud of me for doing. So, um, we have started an archive collection at U of H. So if you don't know who Honk is or DJ Screw or any of these people that I'm talking about, you can go to the University of Houston. They have an archive collection. And in that collection, you can see all the history and a lot of the things that they've contributed to the culture in Houston. Nice. And, um, it's, it's a great place to start, you know, where you can really learn the history and everything and hear his music and see all the things.